Hello everyone, my name is Ryan and in this video I will show you how to set up Linux Mint 20 for gaming and this will allow you to play both native and Windows developed games on your system. In particular this video is actually going to cover the installation of Nvidia GPU drivers, Wine, Lutris and Steam as well as covering how to enable Steam Proton for your entire Steam library and also setting up Feral Game Mode to automatically run when you launch a game through either Steam or Lutris. Now, I should note at this point that if you've got an AMD GPU, you can actually skip the first step of installing drivers since they're already included as part of the Linux kernel. In this case, it's Linux kernel 5.4. So step one is to install the latest NVIDIA GPU driver. Now, in Linux, you've actually got two choices for NVIDIA drivers. You've got the open source Nouvelle or the proprietary driver developed by NVIDIA themselves. Now, since this video is assuming that you're going to be gaming on Linux Mint, then there's no reason at all why you would not install and use the proprietary driver, as several benchmarks will show you that, that at least performance-wise, it's on par with Windows, which I suppose is expected as it is fundamentally the same driver. Now, in contrast, the Nova driver is not recommended to be used for gaming, as it would not offer you anywhere near the performance of the proprietary driver. Now, luckily, Linux Mint has a very good application called Driver Manager, that will allow you to switch between proprietary and open source drivers. Now I found in my experience that after I installed Linux Mint I did find that it was using the open source drivers by default but again this is easily resolved and all you need to do is literally tick on the option that says here next to the recommended driver. Once you've done that you click apply changes and then reboot your system once the installation process is finished. Now in my particular case I've done this ahead of time for this video but uh, like I said, it's not too difficult to work out. So step two is to install the latest version of Wine Stable. Now, if you're not familiar with Wine, it's a compatibility layer that allows you to run applications that are designed for Microsoft on a Linux operating system. Now, it's not perfect, but it certainly has matured in the last couple of years to a point where approximately 10,000 games that were originally developed for Windows are now playable on Linux. Now, I will point at this point that you can technically install Lined through the Linux Mint software store, but I don't recommend doing it that way, as in my experience I found that the packages either do not install correctly or you tend to miss dependencies. So on that basis, we're going to be installing it directly from Wine HQ. So the first thing we need to do is go to download and we need to choose Ubuntu. In particular, we're looking at this bit section here, Ubuntu 2004. Now, this is absolutely fine because Linux Mint 20 is based on Ubuntu 2004. Now, we're effectively going to copy all these commands one by one and install Wine. But to do that, we need a terminal window. So I'm going to pop that on top. So the first one is just to enable 32-bit architecture. I, technically, I don't think this is necessary because I think all the most recent distributions already have this enabled, but it doesn't harm to, you know, just to double check that. So next one is we're going to add a repository key so we can actually install Wine. Okay, and now we actually need to add the repository. As I mentioned before, Wine uh, Linux Mint 20 is based on Ubuntu 2004, so this is why we need this particular line here. So again, copy that and paste that in. Press enter. And there you go, that's now added. So next we need to update all the repositories, including the one we've just added, which is free, which is this command here, which is sudo apt update. And now we've got everything up to date, we need to actually install Wine. Now there's three branches you can install. You've got stable, development, or staging. Now we're not technically going to be using Wine itself, for playing games, uh, we're actually going to be using a customized version of Wine developed for Lutris later on in this video, but for the sake of covering dependencies, just install the stable one. So again, copy that and then paste it and press Y to confirm, and it will go through the motion of download and everything. Now, one thing I will mention that I've noticed in my experience using Wine is that I would normally recommend using the staging branch because it has more patches. But uh, I've noticed, especially if you try and run a game that requires Media Foundation workarounds, it doesn't seem to work with the latest staging branch, but it works absolutely fine with Stable Branch, which is why I recommend it 
for this particular video. Okay, so that process is now finished. And now we can move on to the next step. So step three is to install the latest version of Lutris. Now, if you're not familiar with what Lutris is, it's effectively a front end for Wine that allows you to easily install and play Windows games on Linux using Lutris scripts. And these are special scripts that handle the installation and the setup process for each individual game. And I mentioned previously that Lutris does use a custom version of Wine, uh, which is designed for use with games. Now, a little bit of history. Historically, Lutris was one of the two main methods of running Windows games on Linux. The other one was Play on Linux, which I don't even think is maintained anymore. And I will add that with the advent of Steam Proton, my personal recommendation is to use Steam Proton for any games you've got in your Steam library, and then use Lutris for games in pretty much anything that isn't in Steam. For example, EA Origin, if they recently merged with Steam, uh, you've got Blizzard Battle.net, and of course you've got Epic Game Stores, which everyone on Linux loves for some reason. I'm being sarcastic, they don't love them. Now, Lutris is not able to be installed from the Linux Mint Software Manager, so we'll actually be installing it through the terminal once again. So if we go to download, and this time it's only three commands, so let's bring our terminal back up. Uh, the first command will just add the PPA, or the Personal Package Archive. So this gives us a location of where to install it from. So press enter to confirm that. And then once again, let's just update that. So sudo apt get update, or sudo apt update does the same thing. And then finally, let's actually install Lutris. So we're going to run the following, which is sudo apt get install Lutris. Press Y once again to confirm that, and let it go through the motion. It doesn't take too long to do this. Okay, so Lutris is now all installed. We can move on to the next step. So step five is to install Steam and also enable Steam Proton for all your games in your library. Now Steam, or more appropriately Steam Proton, is probably one of the main reasons why gaming on Linux has taken off in the last couple of years. As uh, Proton effectively removes the complex complexity of installing and maintaining the wide prefix for each game. And basically it bounds down to, it allows an end user to click, install and run games exactly the same as you would normally do it in Windows. Now I'll be the first to admit Proton isn't perfect, but as of the last count, I mentioned before that it, run, it works with approximately 10,000 Windows games, so I, what I strongly recommend you do is check out ProtonDB, uh, just to check compatibility with your particular library uh, before you actually consider switching over to Linux. Now Steam can be found in the Software Management uh, Manager, so what I recommend you do is click on the Steam one, using the one at the top, not the Steam Flat Hub, because you don't want the flat part version, click Install, and you'll be prompted for your password, so type that in. And then it go through the motions of installing it. And once it's installed, launch it and sign into your account. You'll probably find there'll be an update. There always is the first time you launch Steam. Now, by default, Steam will allow you to install any games that have a native Linux client or have actually been whitelisted by Valve as 100% compatible with Proton. So, for example, uh, Dark Souls 3 is a Windows native game, but it's, it's on, it is actually on the whitelist for Proton. However, uh, no, Dark Souls 2 is not on the whitelist, so that's why it doesn't allow you to install that. And then you've got native games such as Borderlands 2, which I've heard is not a very good native game, and then a couple of the Tomb Raider games as well. Not that one, apparently. That one it is, yes. So what we can do is we can enable Proton to, for use with all of your games in your library with just a couple of clicks. So we need to go to Steam at the top, Settings, Steam Play, and choose this option here where it says Enable Steam Play for all other titles. And as of this video, the latest version is 5.0-9. Click OK, and then restart Steam. And you should now have the option to install any games that are available in your library. Again, not every game will work 100%, so that's why I recommend you check out ProtonDB for some advice on people that have got, uh, got games to work. So like I said, it doesn't matter which one you do, you can now actually install it. 
Now one further tweak I'll show you, again if you go to Steam settings, and this time if you go to share the pre-caching, and make sure you tick this option here where it says allow background processing of Vulcan shaders. Now what that means is that if you launch a game and there's actually some shaders available, it will actually load them and cache them before you start the game rather than during you playing the game. And what that basically means in real time is that you'll encounter less stuttering and slowdowns because everything will be cached ahead of time. So once again click OK. Okay. So step six and also the final step in this video is to enable a feral game mode for all games launched either through Steam or Lutris. Now if you're not familiar with what feral game mode is, in layman's terms it's basically a little daemon that, that can be loaded alongside a game and it sets your CPU and GPU to use performance modes rather than power saving modes. The result is that in certain games performance can be increased. You probably notice it more on laptops because they're more likely to have power saving functionality. And also as a result of it, like I said, performance is increased in some games and sometimes you find that the frame rate is more consistent as well. Now game mode, much like Ubuntu 20 or 4, is pre-installed so you don't even need to worry about installing it. However, you do still need to enable it. So if we go back to Steam, and if we just right click on the random game, let's go to Borderlands 2, why not? Go to properties, go to set launch options, and you'll type in the following, which is game mode, run. Then you've got your percentage signs, which I couldn't see on the keyboard. Then command. So that's all you need to type in. Game mode, run, percentage sign, command, percentage sign. Click OK and close. So what that means is next time I launch Borderlands 2, it will now launch alongside game mode. Now if you ever want to check if game mode is actually running, if you type in the following, which is game moded D-S. So as you can see, it's inactive at the moment, but when it's running, unsurprisingly, it will change to active. Now we can do a similar sort of thing for Lutris as well. So let's load up Lutris. It's probably the first time I've loaded Lutris, so it's gonna tell me about that. Yep, that's fine. So to enable it for all games in Lutris, you go to the top here, go to Preferences, go to System Options, make sure you've unticked, or ticked rather, Show Advanced Options. And if we scroll down to the bottom bit down here, under Command Prefix, and you type in Game Mode Run once again. Now eagle-eyed people out there will have noticed that there's a toggle here, Enable Feral Game Mode. Now I've yet to ever get that to work on a Ubuntu based distribution. I know it definitely is enabled on Arch, uh, or, well Arch and Arch based distributions such as Manjaro. And I don't think it's enabled on Fedora as well which also can work with Feral Game Mode. But either way, if you put it here in the command prefix, it does the same thing. So then we can click save and there you go. So basically what that means is that any game launched through Lutris or Steam, I presume of course you put the prefix, it will now launch with game mode. So with that, Linux Mint 20 is all set up for you to play native and games developed to work for Windows. Now certainly in comparison to the previous version of Linux Mint, there's a hell of a lot less setup required, which can only be a good thing. And also it brings this, uh, this video to an end. As always, if you did find my video helpful, please don't forget to leave me a like on the video and also subscribe to this channel for more content like this. Thanks again. And no doubt I'll see you next time. Goodbye.